What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TTB Ravens Media, bringing you Ravens content every single day. If you want to see that daily Ravens content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell as well if you want to get notified every single time I put a brand new video. Before I even get into this video, guys, I want to apologize if I sound a little bit off. My mouth is super sore, so I do apologize if I don't sound normal. If I sound normal, Great. I can't really tell because, you know, hearing your own voice and things like that, very difficult to tell. But let's get into this video. We're just going to jump right in. No intro or anything like that. Rashad Bateman the other day, you know, talked about how he's ready to step up. And I'm going to take it a step further and say that Rashad Bateman is the number one wide receiver that the Baltimore Ravens need. Okay. When you look at this Ravens roster and you look at whether you're looking at Twitter, you're looking at uh, you know, random videos across the media. Everyone, it, it, most of the things that you see when talking about the Baltimore Ravens roster is where's the wide receiver? And it's never like, yeah, some, they bring up the wide receiver core, but it's like they're missing a number one. That's kind of the, the discussion that I see most often. Like, yeah, they say, oh, the Ravens receiving core it needs work, but it's mostly they're referencing they need a number one wide receiver. And then when you hear that, they say they need to get themselves a Julio Jones. They need to get themselves a, you know, whoever, you know, there, there's nobody really available now. Maybe you could say Odell, Antonio Brown, you know, number one. I'm here to say they don't need that. Now, I'm also here to say that those players would make the Ravens roster better. So I'm not saying the Ravens can't improve on their wide receiver core. However... I am completely okay with Rashad Bateman being the number one wide receiver. And if they want to go out and sign a number two, a number three, a depth piece, by all means, go for it. That's not the point of this video to talk about, you know, the potential options as, as depth wide receivers. I'm here to talk about the number one wide receiver, the guy Lamar Jackson will be targeting at the wide receiver position. And why do the Ravens not need a top five wide receiver. Why don't they need a Devontae Adams? Why don't they need a DeAndre Hopkins, a, a Jamar Chase, a Justin Jefferson, who, you know, whoever you think um, is a great wide receiver. Why don't they need a guy that's proven like that? Because that they wouldn't be the number one. Even if you had Devontae Adams to the Baltimore Ravens roster, he wouldn't be the number one pass catcher. Mark Andrews is the number one pass catcher for a couple of reasons. One, he's a phenomenal pass catching tight end. He's a top three tight end in the NFL. He was the best tight end in the NFL last season, hands down. Above Kelsey, above Kittle, above Waller. He was phenomenal. Then you add in the fact that Lamar Jackson loves him. He loves throwing to him. He loves throwing to the tight ends. Mark Andrews fits the exact mold of a player that Lamar Jackson likes to throw to. And finally, the scheme that they're in isn't based around the wide receiver position. It's based around Mark Andrews. And again, this video is not specifically saying we need to change our scheme. We need to change it. No, no, no. This is talking about the current wide receiver one situation in Baltimore. Now, if you want to comment down below and, and say, you know what? We need to get rid of Greg Roman. I agree. We should get rid of Greg Roman. But that's not the point of this video. The point of the video is to say... In the Baltimore Ravens scheme that they have currently, and it appears they will be moving forward with, Mark Andrews is the number one. Then it's Rashad Bateman, and that is great for the Baltimore Ravens. Because Rashad Bateman, if you draft a first-round wide receiver, you expect them to become a number one wide receiver. And this is now Rashad Bateman's second season. And I fully expect him to take over the NFL because he was great last year. He was fantastic. The problem was most of the time that he was playing was when Lamar Jackson was out. So the Ravens weren't winning. No matter how good rookie players are, whenever teams aren't winning, they're just not given the hype that other players are getting when they do win, right? Jalen Waddle, really good rookie year. He got a lot of hype. You know who I think had a great year as well? Devontae Smith. How much hype did Devontae Smith get? Very little, if any. Like, he just wasn't hyped up. 
And I felt he played very well. But the Eagles just weren't winning to the level that they would need to for teams to recognize him. Now, obviously, we can look at Jamar Chase and be like, well, they were winning. Jamal, Jamar Chase also put up, like, the greatest rookie wide receiver season of all time. So I'm not going to use him as an example. But, you know, Justin Jefferson, when he had his rookie seasons, the Vikings were winning games. So often we see these players that put up good numbers, and it's similar to the NBA where, you know, guys come in, you know, a young Trey Young, right? He came in and he was putting up great numbers. The Hawks weren't winning. So it was like, oh, Luka, Mavs won the trade. All of a sudden, a couple of years later, they go to the Eastern Conference Finals. Now, now obviously, the Mavs, they're in the Western Conference Finals. But people were like, oh, wait a minute. Is Trey Young guys actually, he's not just a stat pattern. Same thing with Devin Booker, right? You know, early in his career, it was like, oh, he's not winning, though. The wide receiver position, any position, really, if you're not winning, it doesn't really matter in the conversations unless you're doing something unbelievable. But Josh Allen didn't get hype until he started winning. Lamar Jackson didn't get hype until he started winning. Rashad Bateman did not get hype because the team wasn't winning. Not his fault. He was playing great. But they were missing everybody. And they were in games and he was making unbelievable plays. He had his first touchdown. I still call it his first touchdown against the Cleveland Browns. Um, somehow, they didn't give it to him. Uh, they still scored you know, on the very next play. But he was fantastic. He ran great routes. He had good hands. And when he started playing with Lamar Jackson... That first game, he did struggle a little bit. Um, Lamar um, threw an interception to him uh, that was Lamar Jackson's fault. He just didn't see the linebacker. Then another one went off of his uh, run off Rashad Bateman's chest, ended up getting intercepted, but they were up by a ton, so it didn't really affect the game. But his routes were clean. We saw him in the offseason. He was, he was fantastic in training camp um, up until he ended up getting hurt. He was fantastic. That type of route running is going to come back because he showed off the route running in the NFL. He just didn't have a quarterback that was an MVP winner, a historically great quarterback like Lamar Jackson. When now that Lamar has him, he will be able to put up great numbers. And he will. everyone will recognize, oh wow, he actually is a number one. It's very different from Hollywood Brown because Hollywood Brown has shown, I'm not saying he's better than Hollywood Brown right now, I hope he is, uh, but Hollywood Brown had inconsistencies, severe inconsistencies, he's had drops problems, you know, he's had, he's called out the coaching before, you know, he had done a couple of things where people were questioning whether or not he was that wide receiver one, but you know what, he got talked about, why, because the Baltimore Ravens were winning games, they were making it to the playoffs with Hollywood as the number one. He was putting up good numbers in playoff games. I believe Hollywood Brown is in the top 10 in NFL history in playoff yards per game as a wide receiver. He put up numbers. But, he, you know, you don't get talked about unless your team is winning. Who do we not talk about in the NFL that's a young wide receiver? If you guys are in Maryland, you may have heard of the other D.C. located team. I know it's not actually the, you know, they're not in Maryland. Or I'm pretty sure they're not. Washington Commanders. Terry McLaurin is a great young player. He's a fantastic young player. We don't hear anything about him. Why? Because they weren't winning. If you're not winning, your guys aren't going to be able to get hyped up. So, now that he has, Rashad Bateman is going to win. If, if Lamar Jackson is playing, he's going to win. That is, that is a fact. Based on every single thing that has ever happened in his career, the one consistency is that he wins. Right? He wins. Is it by him throwing the ball deep? Is it by him running the football? You know, is it him, you know, making extra plays? Is it him telling coach to go for it on fourth down? That changes all the time. Is he using his tight ends? Is he using the running backs? Is he using the wide receivers? That's always changing. The one thing that stays is that Lamar Jackson wins football games. And when you win football games, your players are going to be talked about. And people will recognize when Lamar Jackson is throwing the ball because nobody's looking up Tyler Huntley highlights. No disrespect to Tyler Huntley, but nobody's looking up highlights. ESPN, Sports Center, they're not going out there and they're like, look at this play from Tyler Huntley. Right? Everyone complains about Patrick Mahomes. You know, Patrick Mahomes makes a throw. Oh, it's a sidearm throw. 20-yard touchdown pass, right? 
And people will say, well, this quarterback made that pass two weeks ago. Why wasn't that hyped up? Because they're not Patrick Mahomes. Because they aren't a superstar. If you're a superstar, your highlight plays will be broadcasted. And everyone will see them. Lamar Jackson is a superstar. If he makes a play, if he makes a throw, if he is involved in any way in a play, it's going to be broadcasted. And people are going to see it. And people are going to talk about it. Rashad Bateman now has the luxury of playing with that. So... Rather than him, like, when he mossed that guy in that Cleveland game, nobody talked about it. If Lamar Jackson throws that football, everyone is talking about, did you see that receiver that Lamar Jackson has now? Man, that Rashad Bateman kid, that guy looks special. We didn't get to hear that because Tyler Huntley threw the ball. And I like Tyler Huntley. But the media does not care about Tyler Huntley. The media does not care about average quarterbacks. They don't care about bad quarterbacks. They don't care about backup quarterbacks unless they are a meme backup quarterback. So unless it's Trace McSorley, Gardner Minshew, that's kind of about it uh, for the meme backup. Mitch Trubisky, um, he's no longer a backup, but back when he was in uh, Buffalo. You're not getting hyped up unless you are cared about by the media. And Rashad Bateman is getting that opportunity this season And a lot of people are going to recognize that he is a legitimate number one wide receiver in the NFL. He came into the league and was good. This is not a situation where he came in and he struggled his rookie year. Like a, like a Jalen, like Jalen Rager was a first round pick by the Eagles. He came in and he struggled. He did not look great his rookie season. And then there was like, okay. He's not really a number one wide receiver. But he came in and they were like, this guy's going to be the number one. Bateman came in, got hurt, missed the part where Lamar Jackson played, got a couple of overlap games. And then he looked really good. And if you look really good as a rookie, there are a lot of players that look really good as a rookie but don't get hyped up. T. Higgins looked great as a rookie, but the Bengals weren't winning. Wasn't getting hyped up. He was pretty good last year. He's a great number two wide receiver. C.D. Lamb has been fantastic. Doesn't get that much hype. He gets a little bit of hype because he plays for the Cowboys. But he's going to be really good this year. Jerry Judy, the Denver Broncos haven't been winning, but Jerry Judy's a pretty good wide receiver. Pretty good young wide receiver. Now that he has Russell Wilson, he's going to get hyped up because he's good. It's very different when you come in and you're not that good and you're not getting hyped up because you're just not that good. Rashad Bateman was good, just played on a bad team. Now he's playing on a really good team with a top five quarterback. I'll say a top four quarterback. I wouldn't be mad if you say top three. I wouldn't be mad if you said top one. He's playing with the most explosive, dynamic, and talked about player in the NFL. And he's going to get recognized. I'm not going to make a prediction on the stats that he's going to put up. But what matters in the Baltimore Ravens system as a wide receiver, statistics aren't going to be as good as other players. It's not going to happen, unless unless you're Mark Andrews. You're, you're just not going to be a wide receiver putting up. You may be better than a player. When Rashad Bateman got drafted, Joshua and I talked about how he could have a Justin Jefferson impact on the Ravens because he would be able to just take the team to the next level. But we also said he would not have those numbers. He wouldn't be close to those numbers because he's not in a pass-heavy system, right? Rashad Bateman is going to be one of the most impactful players on this Baltimore Ravens team. I'm going to say he's going to be the third most impactful skill position player. I think he's going to be more impactful than J.K. Dobbins, than Gus Edwards, than everybody not named Mark Andrews or Lamar Jackson. Rashad Bateman is going to be a star and he's going to get recognized this year. And that is why I don't think the Ravens need to just aggressively pursue number one wide receivers. Now, again, if we add an, if we add a great wide receiver, like a Julio, Odell, Antonio Brown, whatever it is, that'll help the roster. But that does not mean Rashad Bateman is taking a back seat. Because even if we signed one of those guys, Rashad Bateman could very well still be the number one wide receiver. And he could have that that impact that Justin Jefferson had. That 
you know, Jamar Chase had. He can be the playmaker the Ravens need at that number one wide receiver spot. He can get open, he can make good catches, he can make contested catches, and he can move with the ball in his hands. Guys, let me know what you guys are thinking about Rashad Bateman being the number one wide receiver. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for Daily Ravens content. I really hope that my voice wasn't all, uh, you know, messed up recording this. So hopefully it was all good. Um, if you guys want to join the airtime, the link in the description down below. If you guys want to check out TTB uh, Ravens Media merchandise, you can check that out in the description as well. If not, no worries whatsoever. We appreciate you guys no matter what. So thank you so much, and we'll see all of you again next time.